draft script for remotely conducted open meetings. Good afternoon, good evening. This open meeting of the Arlington School Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order. I'm gonna like slash and burn because I think he told us we could shrink it. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we have been advised to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law. All members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. This meeting will not feature public comment. We are convening via Zoom. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Others may be able to see you. Don't screen share your computer. Um, the materials for the meeting will be available in Novus. If they're not available now, they will be available shortly at the end of the meeting. We me recommend members of the public follow the agenda as posted. Um, I will introduce each speaker. We will have a roll call vote for any um, votes that we take. So let's see. Um, attendance. So um, Ms. Exton. Here. Um, Mr. Cardin. Here. Dr. Allison Ampey. Here, and my video goes off because otherwise you guys all freeze. Mm. Um, Mr. Thielman. Yes, here. Mr. Schlickman. Good evening. Mr. Keener. Yes, here. I am also here. Okay. So I'm looking to see what we called the first item on our agenda. Um, so we are here tonight to um, begin the uh, open part of the process of searching for a new superintendent. So for those who are joining us, some background in June of 2019, um, Dr. Bodhi notified the school committee that it was her intention to retire at the end of, um, in, in, at the end of June, 2021. Um, so we did a two-year contract at that time. And then in the spring, uh, we we spent some time in the winter of last school year into the spring planning a superintendent search in a subcommittee which was led by Mr. Schlickman and at the time the other members were Dr. Allison Ampey and Ms. Seuss who was a former member of the committee. Um, we moved forward when we set our subcommittees for this cycle um, and Mr. Cardin took Ms. Seuss's position on the superintendent search process subcommittee, those three members of the school committee, along with a number of members of the public. I think it was, you were a committee of 13, is that right, Mr. Schlickman? Uh, 15. 15, all right. So along with 12 other members um, of the community, including members of the public, parents, members of the Arlington Public Schools community, uh, teachers, administrators, et cetera, uh, worked together over um, the last you know, six, six to eight weeks, I think, to um, begin the process of searching for our new superintendent. And I know that Mr. Schlickman can speak more articulately to this than I can because he was more uh, involved in the process um, and I will let him do so, but just so that people know, so where we are tonight is that we are in a place where uh, the, the search process committee um, has, has finished their work, they have, finalists to bring to the school committee. And then we are meeting tonight, not to discuss the finalists, but to plan um, the very important work over the coming weeks of soliciting the opinion of the of all of the stakeholders in the community about these candidates um, so that ultimately um, we can make a decision. So, um, Mr. Schlickman, would you like to give us some um, whatever background you would like and um, tell us about the finalists? Does that make sense? That makes, that makes perfect sense. sense. All right, go ahead. Okay, so we start off uh, with a 15 member search screening committee with two alternates. And I wanna say it was an extraordinary committee. Uh, people volunteered to meet together on Zoom for uh, for a bunch of nights, like seven nights, to start the uh, to gather questions, to interview the candidates, and to deliberate. Uh, this was a very diverse committee. It was made into a diverse committee for very solid reasons because we wanted different viewpoints and different opinions and different perspectives. And at the 
end of the entire process, we converged both in terms of consensus and a unanimous vote to decide to recommend to the school committee that we proceed with two finalists for the position of superintendent. Uh, I have posted their information at arlingtonsuper.com. The two finalists are Dr. Veronica Greer, who is superintendent in Sharon, and Dr. Elizabeth Holman, who is assistant superintendent in Waltham. Uh, we used a rating system to get there, and Kirsty was very helpful because she suggested the methodology, which worked just fine. These two candidates uh, rose to the top of the nine candidates we selected to interview, who rose to the top of the 20 applicants. So we are in 100% agreement that we are presenting to the committee the two best candidates uh, for the position. We have done a bunch of preliminary re reference checking. And of course, MASC has done much of that for us. Uh, and we've done whatever uh, investigations and questions we can raise about the two candidates without compromising the confidentiality of the process. So that uh, if I had a friend in Waltham or in Sharon and I were to call them up and say, hey, what do you think about this person? It would expose them as a candidate, which would not have been an ethical thing for us to do. So we've relied upon third party sources uh, and in, in other information available to us uh, in order to uh, verify that these are two candidates that definitely have the credentials to move forward. They also have excellent letters of recommendation in the file. And if you look at the website, anyone is able to go and click upon their application, which includes their letters of reference. They are redacted, so we're not disclosing personal information. Other than that, that is the actual application that the committee saw. I also want to stress that for the other 18 people who began the search process. This has been a confidential search process and that uh, we are ethically obliged not to discuss anyone who might have applied or did not apply that weren't brought forward. So these are the only two candidates we can talk about. And we have basically uh, a unanimous vote and a consensus to support them. Uh, the next conversation will be how do we go about the business of uh, conducting the next set of interviews, which under normal circumstances would be a pretty easy thing to do, because we have traditionally invited the candidates to come to the district, tour the district, meet a lot of people uh, in, in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, that's not in the range of possibilities. So we will probably do a bunch of work on Zoom with two components. One component is in which the candidates will spend some time in open community forums with teachers, parents, community members, uh, all public, uh, with the exception of the teachers. We want the teachers to be able to, to talk to the candidate uh, on their own confidential, uh, confidentially. But for community members, the rest of it, it will be, be an open process. We'll invite the two candidates to in, arrange individual meetings uh, on Zoom or on the telephone with the town manager, uh, uh, Superintendent Bodie and uh, district leadership. Uh, and we will also supply for the community a survey monkey type document where if they participate in or watch one of these community events, they can go in and rate the candidate on, on various scales and provide feedback. It, after that happens, we'll be able to look at the feedback as we interview the candidates, which I anticipate being <clears throat> at least two hours for each session. This is an important job uh, and moving forward. And then we'd have a deliberation, uh, possible uh, site visits, Zoom site visits. We, we can decide what we want to do 
uh, moving forward after we meet and interview the candidates. Now, I will also state that we had a series of questions that we did ask the candidates through the first round that has been distributed to the school committee and will make that public as well. So people know the questions that we had asked in the past. So that um, our questions as a school committee, hopefully will not be the type of time crunch where you have about four minutes to answer a question. I'd like to see us move to a format where we give each, uh, each member of the committee say 10 minutes to engage in conversations with each candidate. Uh, with the, within a framework of questions so that we could get a conversation, get a feel for who they are and, and ask them about things that are more relevant to public governance. And, and that's where we stand right now. We'll have to schedule uh, times for two interviews with the committee, which are public meetings. Uh, we're entering town meeting season, which makes, and we have uh, Veterans Day and Thanksgiving, which makes it more complicated uh, so it, it, it's proving to be a, a more challenging time to do the uh, finals than we anticipated when we, when we set up the timeline uh, a few months ago. But we can do this. And uh, I think that uh, we've got two excellent candidates. Uh, the community be, will be, will be uh, fortunate to hire either one. And, uh, and I look forward to the, giving the community the opportunity to meet them. And that's what I have to say. Great. Thank you, Mr. Schlickman. And thank you to uh, both you and Mr. Cardin and Dr. Alice Nampi and Ms. Seuss, um, as well as the other 12 members of the search process committee. This um, was a very time consuming process for all of you. Um, and I think I can I can only speak for myself, but I can imagine that myself and the other three members of the committee are excited to be here at this juncture um, on November 4th, having an opportunity to meet two finalists for this position. Um, so I'm, I'm really grateful for all of your hard work because we wouldn't be here in early November if it wasn't for, for all of you and for the willingness of the search committee to really pull double duty and spend an extraordinary amount of time um, interviewing all of the other candidates. I will note for the public that, as Mr. Schlickman noted, the, the process until this point was done in executive session and the other members of the school committee, myself, Ms. Exton, Mr. Hainer, um, and Mr. Thielman did not participate in that part of the process. And so we, um, these candidates are new to us as well, um, which is which is exciting. So um, I think what I'd like to do is um, if there's a motion to accept these two finalists, I think that we should go through that and then we can work through figuring out um, our next steps. Uh, Madam, um, Chair, Madam yes. Chair, I move we accept the finalists and uh and uh, move forward with scheduling interviews for them. Second. All right, any more, any discussion? It's hard to actually, it's hard to see you guys. Um, Mr. Schlickman, are you able to unshare your screen so then I can get everybody back in front yes, of Yes, I can. Uh, yeah, that, that'd be appropriate. Yeah. We're all here. Okay, um, so seeing no, just, a, oh, Mr. Thielman, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, I, I wanna thank the uh, screening committee um uh and you know i just read through their applications uh when they came in when uh, mr schleckman sent them to us the other day and they're very impressive candidates i one thing I, I am curious about um and i realize this is executive session and there's it's it can't be that transparent but um we we got two great candidates was there ever a conversation about trying to get us more candidates getting more candidates to this to this um final round and could you speak at all to the to that discussion without revealing people's names uh yeah i could do that uh the there was such a clear division between the top two candidates in terms of the point scoring and the remaining candidates it would have been difficult to differentiate uh a third among the essentially what turned out to be a second tier of candidates. And it was the opinion of the committee that 
these are the two people we wanted to hire. We didn't want to bring somebody into the search who stood a much lower probability of being hired uh, and uh, put them through the stress and strain uh, when there was such a clear differential in our mind going forward. Uh, the other thing is, is that we did uh, ask uh, Mr. Kucher what his impression of that question was we spent some time debating whether or not we can go forward with two or uh, should we go find a third. At this point in time, both applicants are highly enthused about Arlington. They are, uh, as far as we know, are not in any other searches. We are early in the game. And the reason why you'd bring in a third in many parts would be to protect against losing one of the candidates if you only had two. We think there's a very small risk of that happening. Uh, so we're very confident going through going forward with with these two candidates uh, is appropriate. Okay. Uh, would uh, my committee members agree with that? Uh... Mr. Cardin? Yeah, that, that, that was the other only point I was going to raise was, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we did have a serious discussion. We wanted to have you know, more candidates, um, but the way these searches work, you don't know who's gonna apply or who, you know, what the what the committee is going to react to. Um, and it was a pretty clear consensus that there's, these were the top two um, and it would be a little bit artificial to find a third person. So mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, we just, again, we discussed it for quite some time, um, you know, and um, that's sort of where, where we came out. For that, by the way, I'm grateful. I, I mean, I'd rather not, spend time with candidates that are very strong people and have great credentials, I'm sure, but are not a, the right fit for this job. Mm -hmm. The other point I just want to make is that um, Ms. Schlickman talked about a 10 minute limitation rule. That actually may make great sense. I don't, I just don't know yet. I haven't got into thinking about the questions, mm -hmm. but if it's a 120 minute meeting, if it's, we actually could probably give each, but everybody 15 minutes mm -hmm. and still do this in two hours. So I just would not, I think sticking to a 10 minute time frame and stopping people at 10 minutes, especially if the conversation gets helpful and interesting to the rest of the group with the candidate um, would be not the best way forward. I, I, I agree in philosophy with Mr. Thielman. One of the things that happened when we had a 15 member committee doing a 90 minute interview essentially is that it was very fractionalized. And I, I think the thing that we need to do more than anything else is to be able to engage in those conversations. The committee's willing to go uh, for a 15 minute discussion with each person, that would be fine. My thoughts initially were to do 10 to 12 and then have a do a round of that, then do five minute follow-ups. You could, that's, that's, a, that's a good idea too. That's mm -hmm. a good idea. Actually, that's often better to have a follow-up round. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it's up to the full committee. I, I, I'm just thinking and reacting to what we saw and, and how the, com uh, the candidates responded during the first round and uh, the kinds of things that we feel we needed to talk, talk about uh, going forward in the finals. Is that it, Mr. Thielman? My final question is just in terms of setting up the dates, is that gonna be by Karen? And we're about to do that next. Okay. No, it's going to be amazing. Okay. Uh, we're just right now we're having discussion about the motion to accept these two, and then um, we're going to have yes. some fun calendaring time. Dr. Allison Ampey. I was just going to concur with my colleagues that um, first, thank you to our committee, um, the search committee, which I think was just it was excellent. It's one of the best. I think it's probably the best committee I've been on in Arlington, not including present company. Um, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate all the work and the thoughtfulness that people put into it. Um, second, we did have the discussion that Mr. Thielman, to, to echo what has mm -hmm. been said, we did have that discussion and it was a unanimous decision of our committee to bring forward these two candidates. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I have to leave at 5.35. All right, we're cruising. Um, any further discussion on this, on the, on the motion by Mr. Schlickman, the second by Mr. Hainer? All right, seeing none, um, Ms. Exton? Yes. Mr. Cardin? Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Mr. Schlickman? Yes. Mr. Hainer? Yes. And I am also yes. 
Okay, so we have our finalists, we've accepted them. So now um, over email, I believe that Mr. Schlickman sent us a couple of documents about um, potential hiring sort of, so how, how, how are we going to now do this, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how are we going to move forward with the important work of soliciting feedback from our stakeholders? And we're in a wonderful position in Arlington. I think there is a lot of, um, I am so grateful to Dr. Bodhi for putting us in this position. Um, she gave us a lot of time to let us know that she was planning to retire. Um, and, and, you know, um, the, the search committee moved us forward and, and she got us started on the right foot. And Arlington is in a great place. So we're very fortunate that we have people who are, you know, who look fantastic, who want to work here. So we need to make sure that we give our community the opportunity to, um, to meet with, with these two candidates and provide um, as much feedback as possible. Um, so um, Mr. Schlickman, do you want to, uh, sort of propose a way of thinking about doing this and then we can have some conversation. I will call on Dr. Allison Ampey first because I know we're at T minus 11 mm -hmm. minutes with her um, so she can give feedback and then um, we'll, we'll let her know what the schedule is. <laughs> um, so go ahead, Mr. Okay, I think that there are two things we need to do. One we need to do is uh, schedule some dates, and obviously we'd have to open ourselves up to dates so that uh, uh, Mr. Kuchar can work with the uh, candidates to adopt their schedule. I think it's important that we, and, and the, the committee doesn't need to do this. Uh, this can be done administratively. The uh, Zoom sessions and introductions to the rest of the committee, uh, the community. The only thing that we need to worry about at this point are the meetings in which we interview the two candidates. So that what I would propose is we'd have two, two and a half hours of time uh, blocked off at this point on two separate dates that can be scheduled uh, one or two days after the, at minimum, uh, after the uh, community gets to meet the candidates. And uh, it might be advisable for the candidates to go and do this all at once, or maybe they do the teachers on one day in the community and, and, and other stakeholders the other, but that's sort of up, up to uh, them to schedule. The only thing we need to worry about right now are two things. One would be when we wanted to conduct our interviews, and two, um, uh, basically a framework for the, for the questions. Um, so that we don't have, uh, so that we don't come and start asking duplicate questions or get surprised by what the other members of the school committee are doing. We don't have to hash that out on our own either. We can use Mr. Kucher uh, and Ms. Kelly as the conduit for just coordinating that. So um, I would propose that we pencil in a couple of dates for uh, potential interviews and then let uh, Glenn work further on this. Dr. Allison Ampey, comment? Okay, what are the dates? <laughs> All right, hold on just a second, Mr. Hainer. I, I, I assume these are going to be separate from our regular meeting dates. In other words, we wouldn't be having a regular business meeting and dedicating two and a half hours. I personally would not like that. I would like to dedicate each of those meetings to the candidates. That's right. So the the there is the potential, Mr. Hainer, that we were the full committee. We have a full business meeting uh, a week from tomorrow on the twelfth, right? Which will be not be a candidate interview. Um, we have plenty that we need to do. Potentially, we also have another meeting on the calendar on the nineteenth the night of the 19th, which is a, a full school committee, we could make a decision to use that as one of the options for interviews if we so chose. Um, but I, I, I also agree with you, Mr. Hainer. I don't wanna, um, mm -hmm. I, I only wanna do one thing. <laughs> so, um, and I obviously I don't That's wanna- That's my only do comment that. on that. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna do them back to back either. I mm -hmm. want to do them on separate days. Um, Dr. Allison Ampey. 
I would point out that I think this is the most important thing that we can be doing right now. And if we need to move our school committee meeting to a different night, that mm -hmm. I think that's what we should be looking for just in terms of thinking about dates, not saying do them at the same time, mm -hmm. but I would move the school committee before I would change the date much later. So absolutely. Mr. Schlickman. Uh, because we've got town meetings going to occupy, I don't know how many Mondays and Wednesdays. I'd like to propose for the sake of discussion that we establish a special meeting for Tuesday, November 17th and conduct interviews at our November 19th meeting. Doctor or Ms. Morgan. I'm sorry, I was taking notes on the date. No, <laughs> no, it's not your fault. It just like I've got all these uh Mr. Theoban. We have an we have an Arlington High School building committee meeting that night. And uh -huh. there's like two set meetings we can't move. One is the 17th and one is December 3rd. We're getting close to um finalizing what's called the guaranteed maximum price. And so there's two meetings we kind of have to have. Um at what time are those at, Mr. Because the issue is, is that of, yeah, of that Monday, week, that week of the 16th, yes. Monday and the Wednesday, I assume yeah. we're still going to be in town meeting on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I just, well, I'm sure we're going to be. Um, yeah. It starts at six o'clock. Um, I mean, I could meet earlier at four o'clock. Um, I don't know how mm -hmm. to. I, I might have a uh, permanent town building committee meeting also that night. That's mm -hmm. it, still iffy. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering. <clears throat> so. Mr. Schlickman is proposing that we meet on the 17th to, and then again on the 19th with one candidate. Is that what you're suggesting? One candidate each, yes. You want to do each candidate in a different night. I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering this. I'm wondering if we just use the 12th and the 19th that are already scheduled and do one meeting on the, one candidate on the 12th, the other on the 19th. I think we- Is the 12th a little too quick? I, don't I would, I would think so because we have to, schedule get get everybody else on board with all the uh, i have no problem with the 19th can we use one of the ones in december well no i i mean <clears throat> no i think we want to get it done i think the issue mr thielman mm -hmm. is that we won't have met as a full committee for three weeks right yeah. by the time we mm -hmm. get to the 12th and then if we um and we could find another full committee so i'm not disagreeing necessarily but i think we would, um, if we absorbed those two November meetings, we don't meet again until December 10th, Yeah. right? Which gives us, that's a long, that's quite a long time. The I'm other gonna issue- heresy, I'm gonna speak heresy, but well, any hold on. chance of doing a Saturday? Oh, before I do that, let me, let me just say that um, we will probably want to dot some I's and cross some T's on the 12th uh, at our business meeting pertaining to the candidate interview. So. You, you want to do it after the 12th anyway. Uh, but I would recommend we, given that we're just going to go into scheduling hell, uh, that we direct the chair to uh, uh, poll the committee to find the date of the second meeting uh, and, and do one at the, on the 19th. Okay. I, yeah, I, I, I would like, I mean, my preference is I would like to not have these spread too far apart. I feel mm -hmm. like a week between people is not my preference. I just no. feel like there's too much that can change in a week. And I really want to see these two, these people, mm -hmm. they don't need to be back to back, but I, I, I don't want to let a lot of time elapse between them. Mm -hmm. it, just for some reason, it makes me, I, I'm, I'm not super comfortable with that. I, I totally agree with this, Morgan. I, by the way, I totally agree. We want to do them both in the same week. We want them as close together as possible so we have the comparison and can think about them both. Um, I have, you know, we got the building committee and I, I, we can't, I can't move, we've moved this thing around so many times. Agreed. And what about the night, the 20th, the Friday? I'm good. I can do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think so how about we let's do the 19th let's let's plan on the 19th and the 20th then mm -hmm. and and then we can see them back to back which is mm -hmm. I know this work. i'm seeing Ms. exton nodding i'm seeing yep. nobody's like yeah thumbs up did you okay. want to friday earlier than than like a we, um, can, we, we can schedule the time anytime we want i mean if we wanted to do it earlier we could i, I, I just leave that to uh just yeah, close to bed early on friday night so mm -hmm. i wish i that was true. <laughs> Anytime. Okay, whatever. Hold on just a second. Ms. Exton. 
And the idea is that we're doing these after the all of the community feedback, the teacher feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the intention would be to do the community feedback, um, you know, either the 16th, 17th, or 18th, right? Yeah, or, or the even, ninth, even I mean, earlier. Or, it could be any time yeah. earlier. Right. Well, right. I think we just want to make sure that we give people as much notice as possible mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. we can get as many, you know, as many people in as possible. And to the same, to the same thing, I don't want to spread out those too much either right i don't i don't want i i would like people to see them you know one right after the other dr allison ampey uh two things well three things one um mr thielman i had uh november 24th as a building committee meeting was that changed um two uh, when, if we have our interviews, the 19th and 20th, which I think is fine, when would you want to do us meeting and thinking and deciding, um, especially given that Thanksgiving is coming? Uh, I would and, propose 1124 the Tuesday. Dr. Christelle, yeah, we sent an email, I sent an email out moving the meeting, you should have gotten that from the there's no meeting. On I the got one moving things to the morning. Okay, I'll I'll figure it out. Yep. Okay, I just want to be sure. It's it's on the right now. It's still on the town website as being a meeting. So oh, that's one. All right, I'll call Mr. Karen. Hainer. <clears throat> the the me after we do the interviews and stuff that meeting and I defer to Paul. Is that an open meeting also, Paul, or is, can that be done in private? Yes, it's an open meeting. Okay, just want to make sure. Uh, everything we do from this point out with the exception of a discussion relative to uh, uh, preparation for contract negotiations okay. must be done in public. Sounds good. So where we stand right now, I, I'm gonna ask people to the extent that they can, obviously to hold the 19th, which should be okay, hold the 20th as mm -hmm. much time as you can, because to some extent we also need to work with our candidates and their availability too, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. hold the 19th, hold the 20th and hold the 24th um, right now. Um, you'll get back to us with like specific times. Oh, yes, yes. And then- and we, and, we, and we could vote the times on the 12th. Sure, that's fine. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But let's, 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 let's pretend, you know, let's hope that those are going to be our days. And then Mr. Schlickman, just so that we're clear, the process for setting up the, um, the stakeholder meetings, mm -hmm. um, will Glenn be orchestrating that? Because I would like to, to the extent that we can, I would like to get that information out to, um, to mm -hmm. teachers and administrators mm -hmm. and um, families as soon as possible so that we can get, you know, so we can, you know, that you're going to get the, we want as many people as possible. We understand mm -hmm. people are very busy. Um, and this is a very, you know, challenging month to be doing this. So, mm -hmm. um, but the sooner that we can let people know the better. Yeah. I will, uh, have Glenn get in touch with you, uh, as the chair of the full committee, uh, to make sure that that message gets out. Okay. So he'll coordinate with the um, he'll coordinate the availability with the candidates, and then um, we're we're looking. I see Ms. Exon. We're looking to um, sometime the 16, 17, 18, ideally to do yeah. one, one day, mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. another day. All right, uh, Ms. Exton. Um, at our previous meeting, we had talked about some kind of in-person opportunity. Have we decided that that's not wise anymore or how well we theoretically if we wanted to i mean we could do the the 19th and the 20th in person if we want to we can we could do those over zoom and then um and then meet on the 24th and decide that we want to meet them in person i don't know i mean it's a good point mm -hmm. yeah i'm not sure so um Discussion about that, Mr. Hainer. In the past, when we've had candidates for positions, they would come about a half hour early, have supper. There'd be a little socializing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, it was open to anyone that, that wanted to come. I don't know whether, I mean, when we do rotary meetings, the first 20 minutes is socializing and getting, 
we want to do the first 10, 15 minutes like that. Just, hi, how are you? How many kids you got? Where do you live? Right. So like the challenge I think is, is that what we need mm -hmm. in order to do this, right? Because um, of the requests from the Department of Health, um, as well as, as you know, um, advisories around um, gathering size, et cetera. It can be the seven of us plus a candidate, which is fine. Mm -hmm. We're well within parameters. We can do that in the school committee room without difficulty. Um, the issue is, is that it, it all needs to be a public, it all needs to be public, right? <laughs> but we can't physically have the public in the room. <laughs> Uh, because that wouldn't be safe for them. And we, so anyway, the, the way that you do this apparently is that, you know, we would still be doing it. Um, I, I would work with ACMI to set it up so that it was still available to the public to view and watch in real time. Um, but we can't, we can't have it open to them to come to the sixth floor, mm -hmm. Mr. Thielman. This is what I would, would suggest, I, and I face this uh, sort of in my day job, is I think the <clears throat> interviews are going to work best if we're on a screen without a mask interviewing the person. I actually think it's going to be more intimate. Mm -hmm. um, the value in a face-to-face -face is, is for all of us who have to take a vote and make a hire um, individually to get a, you know, you know, this, I don't want this to come up, feel for the person, you know, what they like. So I think that is something, if it can be arranged, I would not do it in a formal meeting. Um, I would do it in a, if it's possible to have some sort of a, a social interaction. I don't know. I think you need to, we need to think about that. Um, it could be, in my own experience, it's been like a tour, a walk around uh, mm. facilities where I talk to the person and get a feel. Um, it could be, you know, a, a red gym gathering where there's plenty of room and there's, you know, we could walk around. I don't, I don't know, but I don't, I would not do the formal interviews at mm -hmm. all in any other venue, but this, because mm -hmm. we're going to be much more comfortable without our mask. It's much, much more natural. It's actually more intimate in some respects because you're very close to the candidate. I do think there should be some social interaction allowed. I don't know what it looks like yet in mm -hmm. which we get to be with the, each of the candidates for an hour, not in a formal interview, but or a half an hour, whatever it is, where there's just a, you, you pick up your own vibe. That's yeah. what I would suggest. I agree. So I think bring your best ideas on this mm -hmm. on the 12th, right? Mm -hmm. And then we can, right? Well, I mean, because that's kind of our next chance to, to talk well, about it. And we can, if we can, we can pin down our, our interview times. Um, we can hold the 24th. But we don't. We we may not feel comfortable making a decision at that time. We may want to meet and have a conversation, and then say what are our next steps, right? I mean, I don't. Mm -hmm. We definitely don't want to get. I certainly don't want to get pushed into a decision by a calendar, right? Mm -hmm. But we still want to keep. We want to keep moving. Mr. Cardin, I saw your hand up. Oh, I was I was going to actually see if we could consult with with council about different opportunities to do this without having it being a public meeting. I mean, those dinners that we did. That, that people are talking about, those weren't broadcast or anything. I mean, maybe, maybe they were posted and people could come, but, um, you know, I, I, you know, if we could each, like a two or two of us at a time, for example, could take a walk around the track with a candidate or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing out ideas yeah, where yeah. just a couple of us at a time would meet. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be a quorum. Um, so maybe something just to ask the council about that. Yeah. All right. Just, so just I, a will, point of, I will take that. I will take that on. Um, Mr. Point of Schmidt, clarification. Yeah. Else, yeah. Um, our, when we had those dinners, uh, they were posted public meetings. And if somebody wanted to go and sit on the side and watch us talk and eat dinner with these people, they were able to do that. I caution us to try to uh, do an end run around the open meeting law. Whatever oh. this is, it, it would need to be posted. But uh, I, I would certainly listen to council and in, in, uh, regarding how we could construct a, a more social environment. Dr. Allison Ambi. Um, I just point out that given the way COVID has been going lately, mm -hmm. we may not have all options available mm -hmm. to us. Um, so when you think about what you want to do, we should probably be thinking of different options, you know, mm -hmm. 
if we can do this, if not, we do that, things like that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hainer. I just like to follow up, follow that up with respecting the candidates uh, position as far as COVID as well. Mm -hmm. They may choose not to want to be around us, be in a, in a healthy position to take on the job. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Mr. Thielman. Yeah, everybody's wrestling with the same thing. Mm -hmm. What some organizations have done uh, is after students have left the building, 3.30, they, they arrange for candidates for, for leadership positions to have a social of some sort, a gym, mm -hmm. coffee, bagels, <clears throat> lots of distance, brief hello, that sort of thing. I don't know. I, I just run it by different people. Mm -hmm. It's it, it it's a it's it would be nice to have because this is a big hire and Arlington has a history of having superintendent's day for a decade or more. So we gotta think longer term. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Questions, comments, concerns? Mr. Cardin. Uh, so I also wanted to talk about the virtual site visit visits. Mm -hmm. Mr. Schuckman, how, how do you envision doing those? That's something that you would do with Mr. Kucher or or what? Uh, that remains to be seen. When we've done real site visits, uh, we took a couple, uh, we put a couple people in the car and mm -hmm. actually did a uh, site visit. Uh, in, in this case, it could be the it could be me and Mr. Kucher, it could be me and the uh, members of the process committee. Uh, it could, uh, it would not want, yeah, I mean, we'll have to figure that out uh, depending on what we feel we need to learn. When we hired um, Nate Levinson, we had four finalists and we only did two site visits uh, to our top two candidates. So, uh, once we hear the candidates, then we'll decide what level of additional information we think we need going forward. If we are totally on board with one candidate over the other, uh, there's really no reason for us to traipse around through their lives. If we're more undecided, then, then certainly more discovery would be appropriate. Mr. It's possible to make a motion that um, we select one candidate or the other pending a site visit too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a possible motion that could be mm -hmm. adopted. Okay, Generally so you make the motion. The idea is that we hold the, you know, that we have the 24th, mm -hmm. right? Because we're not gonna, we're not gonna make any moves until we do the 19th and the 20th, right? And mm -hmm. then the next conceivable yeah. time we could all get together because of town meeting, is the 24th. We will come together on the 24th. We will see where we're at, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Knowing that we're going into the Thanksgiving holiday. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we'll come together on the 24th and, you know, kind of, I mean, we're just going to have to take the pulse of where people mm -hmm. are at at that point, mm -hmm. right? I think it's really hard to predict because four of us have never, you know, don't, we've not met any of the candidates, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to know, but I think if we, if we practice some defensive calendaring, so we know mm -hmm. we've got some time, um, then it, it means that we don't, you know, we don't sort of get stymied in indecision or not being able to meet so we can't move forward. Um, and, and then we kind of go from there. I mean, certainly, um, you know, we're, we're looking to, you know, keep moving after Thanksgiving, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I think having the having those three gives us some structure, so mm -hmm. we know we know where we're at. Okay, I'm out. Bye. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't see. I think in terms of you know queuing the community, mm -hmm. I mean, who knows, right? But I I'm not sure that on the 24th we're going to be making a decision to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know, I think we'll we'll see where we're at at that point, right? Mm -hmm. So bring all of your ideas on the twelfth for uh, 
additional events, activities, mm -hmm. et cetera, that may or may not involve mm -hmm. bagels. Um, I also, I would, I would encourage the chair to get some guidance from the superintendent and other people inside the district. So mm -hmm. they, they might, they have a better feel for the building. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so you, you, you're going to get, I, I'd like to know what they think in terms of how could we possibly do this? Mm -hmm. There might, there might be a solution. Yeah. Mr. Schlickman. Uh, I know that the, the uh, public school administration has put together these kind of events when they were hiring principals. So we should be able to follow that template for that part, plus adding an additional uh, co uh, community meeting and, and the components we need so that uh, by MASC interacting, uh, we can. I would urge everyone to call Glenn Kucher and have a conversation about what you're thinking about uh, process going forward, just to touch base. Um, because he is an integral part of this and we're paying him to make proposals to us. We're brainstorming, but he's done this before and he's been through a bunch of searches under COVID. And, and I'm sure he'd appreciate ha uh, just having that casual Q and A as, as to what, what you're thinking. So please call him and get talk his to him. info to us by Karen, please. Mr. Schultz, uh, I actually yeah. don't have it. It's also on the website. It's uh, email and, and phone numbers on the website. So it's uh, it, it's send, all available. Send it to us anyway, Paul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cardin. Yeah, no, I was just going to, I mean, I, this is something I can ask Glenn about. I, mm -hmm. I, I do think we need to do some background checking before mm -hmm. we have our interviews with them, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure there's nothing that we want to ask them about from the background. Mm -hmm. So I'll mm -hmm. ask Glenn how, how he typically does that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're in a good place. Anybody else? Mr. Hainer? I was just gonna ask if the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. I would. So if you move. get a second. I second the motion. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Does anybody wanna talk about it? <laughs> you can't. Motion to adjourn is not debatable. Well, maybe. All right, no, it's I very agree. Polite. All right, Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Cardin. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Mr. Hainer. Or yes. sorry, Mr. Schlickman. Mr. Yes. Hainer. Ms. Morgan. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank Have you. Safe. Thank you. Nice job, uh, Paul and team. Great job. Great Thank job. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Yep. Bye, everybody.